Hi, my name is Simon Michael. I'm an 11th grade student, and today I'm going to talk about probably the most famous theories of all time, Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. And I'm going to explain this huge theory in a very simple way. The theory of relativity has, encompasses two theories, special relativity and general relativity. Special relativity states that the law of physics applies no matter how fast an object is moving. Einstein applied this principle to light, stating that the speed of light represented by C is constant. Light always travels at the same speed for all observers, no matter how fast you're moving or how fast the source of light is moving. The theory of special relativity changed the way scientists thought about time. Until Einstein's theory, it was thought that everyone experienced time the same way. Special relativity determining the rate at which time passes to you depends on your speed. The faster you're moving, the slower the time passes. This is called time dilation. Now we'll talk a bit about that later. Special relativity is also the place where one of the world's famous mathematical formulas comes from, EMC squared. In this equation, E stands for energy, M represents mass, and C is the speed of light. In other words, energy and mass are equivalent. One, one can't exist without the other. Based on the theory of special relativity, Einstein became convinced that space and time are not separate. General relativity is a theory that gravity is caused by bending time and space. Let's represent Earth with this piece of ball. And time and space bends just like this. Then gravity is created. It's easy to explain how light bends around objects in space like the light we see during a solar eclipse. There is no such thing as absolute motion or absolute rest. Everything is related to each other. For example, if Tom is observing two prisms, he'd only know that he's in motion because he will see the other prism coming towards him. In a sense, he and the prism in front of him are moving relative to the other prism. Therefore, nothing is ever in absolute motion or absolute rest. Things just move relative to each other. Time travel. Time slows down for objects which are moving fast, and time stops for objects traveling at the speed of light, and it then follows that time must go backwards for objects traveling faster than the speed of light. So far, no objects can move in the speed of light. On approaching the speed of light, objects start to increase in mass and speed, and it would take an infinite amount of energy for an object to achieve the speed of light. This is why we cannot travel back in time. We simply have not been able to achieve a greater speed than the speed of light. Once again, my name is Simon Michael, and what I explain is the theory of relativity. Like, comment, and do all the good stuff, and thank you.